Hello everyone, we're just waiting for a few more people to jump on and then I will begin. Instagram's just telling all our followers that we've started a live video. So once we've got a few more people on, I will start. I can see that health and social care have just joined. Um, they will be joining us very shortly um, to answer a few questions about health and social care health and social care all they need to do they'll be just coming on and answering a few questions and um, so if you guys have any questions around health and social care please pop them in the comments below and we will be able to answer them somebody just said hi hello um i can see that health and social care has sent their request in and um, so we'll bring them on in a few moments just before i begin this live is solely going to be around health and social care and we're going to be touching on further education and also a little bit about their higher education courses as well and um, we're going to be joined by Alison who is the curriculum manager she will be giving all of us the insight into their area and um, if you've got any questions about health and social care from at any point then please obviously feel free to pop them in the comments below and um, if you don't feel that you would like to to obviously share your question on the live feel free to just go over to our dms on the main college site and um send us a dm and then we will be able to get back to you um alternatively you can just give us a call as well um just before we begin though uh if you know what you would like to study then please do apply um courses do fill up and um, so we do advise just getting your application sent in as soon as possible especially if you already know what you would like to study um a little bit about the college in general we are further and higher education um, and we focus on um, vocational options we have two campuses one at Dartford and one in Gravesend and um, not many people know this the Dartford campus you can get a free sh shuttle bus from the town centre as well um, also another good thing to know is that our prospectuses as well these are available in a digital version on our website so when you go to www.northkent.ac.uk at the very top hand right corner it says download school leavers guide and this will be as a digital version and you can view all of the courses um, and more information on there as well so I'm going to bring on Alison now and we're going to have a chat around health and social care. If you've got any questions, then obviously please send them through. So we should be able to join with Alison in a second. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Can you hear me? Is your camera I'm not sure on? where where my camera's gone. <laughs> it was working a minute ago. No, I am. Just a little glitch. Hello. It was just a little glitch. Perfect. <laughs> So, Alison, I'm going to obviously be asking you a few questions around health and social care. Um, one of the yeah. questions that I'd like to start off with is the levels that you offer um, and the entry requirements, if you don't mind. Yeah, not a problem at all. We offer um, all, f all four levels, actually, at health and social care. So we start with a level one. Um, our level one is an introduction to health and social care and we would be looking at um, people really ideally having five GCSEs at grade two or above and that needs to include English and maths in that. Um, we then have a level two which is a cash diploma in health and social care and again um, prospective students would need five GCSEs but these would need to be at a grade three or above. Um, again, including English and maths. Our level three qualification is potentially a two-year qualification. Mm -hmm. So they would come into the first year with, again, five GCSEs at grade four or above, including English and maths. 
And then we also have a HE program, a higher national certificate, which is a level four um, healthcare practice for England. And to get onto that, they would need 46 UCAS points. So ideally, a level three qualification in a related subject. Perfect. Thank you. Um, I'm get in my end. I'm not sure if it's the same with everybody else, but the volume is slightly loud. I think your end. Can you just turn your volume down slightly on your phone and just ever so? Slightly? I can do that. that is that better? Yeah. That that sounds <laughs> that sounds good. Perfect. Thank you. Um, another. Okay. Sorry. Where are your courses based? Obviously, we have two campuses. Where are they um, studied at? Okay, so all health and social care courses are based at our Dartford campus. So we have no provision at Gravesend at the moment. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, and in terms of progression, obviously you mentioned about the, the level four. Um, so please, could you just kind of explain a little bit about maybe alternative progression routes? Do a lot of your students go into employment maybe? Yeah, so we're, we're really quite sort of 50-50 split between employment and higher education. We have a lot of students will go out into the workplace as healthcare assistants. They will go and work in hospitals. They might work in GP surgeries or um, residential care. But we also have a lot of students that go into higher education. If not with us, they might go to primarily places like Canterbury, Greenwich, King's, South Bank. Um, any sort of healthcare, social care, social work type higher education, so midwifery, mm -hmm. nursing, there's lots of different types of nursing, so it could be adult, paediatric, mental health nursing. We have students go and do social work, counselling, um, paramedic, radiographer. There's, there's so right. many. Anything within the healthcare sector, really, we can lead to. It's, it's a phenomenal amount of careers that you can gain from this qualification. Perfect. Thank you. So what kind of skills and knowledge do they, maybe like the aspects in the course that they learn about to set them up for when they, whatever they decide to obviously go on? Okay, so we do offer a lot of practical elements to our courses, which are really fundamental for going on. They have to do a placement, so they will go out and work in the real sector with real people, and obviously they'll gain an awful lot of transferable skills from that. But we will also do a lot of um, person-centred care, communication, dementia care, all of those sorts of things within the college setting itself. We have a really excellent healthcare suite, which kind of looks like a mock-up hospital that we use quite a lot. And in that environment, students can practice anything from midwifery skills, um, placing catheters, how to feed a patient, how to move a patient using a hoist. So there's all sorts of practical, alongside the theory element that they're going to get, the communication and psychology, sociology, all of those sorts of subjects as well. Perfect. And what would you say the ratio between practical and theory is? Is, there, is it quite high in one or is there quite an even mix? Um, I would say, say there's slightly more theory to practical just because of the nature of the assessment process that we have to go to. So I would say that there's probably a 60-40 split. 60% would be theory, but we try and get as much practical in as we possibly can. Um, and bringing that in, actually, we've moved over in recent years to a cash diploma, and that allows a much more flexibility in our assessment and it's making us rethink what we're doing. And we're trying to introduce much more assessments. So hopefully in the next couple of years, that um, ratio of practical to theory will flip. And we're hoping it's going to be much more practical based. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Perfect. <laughs> in terms of the equipment that you have, you kind of did touch on it. But is there anything else that kind of really supports your students while they're on the course, getting to grips with things um, like maybe injections, how to, to, to practice injections, things like that? Yeah, yeah, we're very lucky. We've got two fully interactive mannequins and these mannequins can um, simulate any possible environment that you might come across in a hospital. So they've got injection and blood taking sites all across the body. Um, they, they can do uh, 
vital signs monitoring we've got a vital signs monitor which people see in the hospital they you know you get plugged into it we've got an ecg machine that people can practice on we've got a drugs trolley um an intensive care trolley uh we've got a birth simulator mannequin um we've got a hoist that i've already mentioned so there is there's a whole range we've got um first aid equipment and as as you said you know sort of injection stuff so there's all sorts of different things they can have a go and practice at yeah brilliant that sounds amazing thank you um so if somebody's obviously interested in a health and social care course um i assume they obviously go onto the website they apply online um, but do you in health and social care have a process Sorry, Sean, you completely froze then and disappeared off my screen, so I didn't hear anything you said. <laughs> so sorry. Um, so is there a process in regards to um, applying? Do you, do you as a department have anything that the, the student would need to do before they begin? Yeah, so obviously the student would apply in the normal way, same as they would for any course, go online, fill in the online application form. Once that's uh, received by our administrator, they will be sent a short written task that we would ask yep. them to complete. It's, it's not very difficult. It's just a, a short discussion about different careers that health and social care can lead to. They will email that to me. Mm -hmm. And when I've received that, within a week, they will receive a telephone interview. Okay. So all of our interviews are obviously remote at the moment. But a member of the health and social care team should call them within a week of us receiving that task. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so in terms of obviously we've spoken about the equipment, the levels, the entry requirements, where you guys are based, progression routes, quite a lot, actually. Um, but one yeah. of the things that I know is what your personal opinion is in regards to what your students enjoy. Is there something that really stands out that your students kind of really get to grips with and it may be a unit or a module or something like that well definitely the practical element is is something that they really do enjoy definitely um we deal with a lot of units that at the moment are topical and that's grabbing people's attention so units such as um infection prevention and control uh, that's quite a topical one we do coping with change that's quite a good unit people quite enjoy that yeah. we try where possible to have some sort of extracurricular enrichment activities our students went to krakow in poland um around this time last year they were one of the fl last flights back into the uk i think before we went into lockdowns oh. so they had an excellent trip to krakow and, and went to auschwitz we're looking at possible trips again for this coming year possibly amsterdam we're looking at um, doing a thing called adopting a care home, which is where we will have a direct contact with a care home in the local area. And we will work very closely with them, possibly sometimes through Zoom, depending on how things pan out. So they might be Zooming, doing a quiz for the, the residents of the care home through Zoom, that kind of thing. Um, so that, that sort of stuff really does go down well with the students. They do enjoy that. Perfect. That sounds lovely. Thank you, Alison. And my last question um, is, is there anything else that you would like to mention about just the course offer um, health and social care in general? Maybe advice to anybody that's thinking about coming to the college or doing health and social care? Um, all I can say is if you're looking at coming into level three, really try where possible to get out into the workplace, get a little bit of work experience so that you come in with a clear idea of, of where you think your pathway and where your career is going to take you. Obviously, on level one and level two, people change their minds all the time. So coming in thinking I'm going to be a paramedic and leaving wanting to be a midwife is not a problem at all. And it happens all the time um and just just join us just come come and have fun perfect lovely Alison thank you so much <laughs> no problem at all Sean sorry about the earlier blip it's okay not a problem <laughs> um so thank you everybody that has obviously watched tuned in um and stayed in touch with us and 
if you've got any questions from now until the end, that's not a problem. Please send them in. Um, if we if we obviously end the live and you're watching this back, then you can still DM us. You can still give us a DM. And we will be happy to answer any questions. We can forward questions on to help and social care and get them answered for you. That is not a problem. Alison is here to help. And so is the rest of the department. We are here to support you um, in your next steps. So if you've got any questions from now until ever, then please feel free to ask them. Um, if you obviously know that you would like to apply for a health and social care course, then please head over to the website and start your application. Obviously, Alison mentioned earlier about the process, and um, so please do that. Um, and again, if you want more information, you can go onto the website, have a look at the digital prospectus, um, and there will be more information around just general college life in there as well for you. Um, and please, please, please keep an eye out on all our social media and our website for more information for up upcoming events. We hope that we will see you obviously all on site very soon. Um, and when you do apply, obviously good luck. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Alison. Thank you. Bye-bye.